this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Today, we're going to get the whole story. The whole story. Everything. About the holes in the traffic signs, that is. Anyways, uh, we're about day, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, something like that, of the coronavirus lockdown here in Napa County. You know, uh, no no travel, no no bars are open, no restaurants. That's the yell to go. Um, so I go to work. I'm still working, which is good, fortunate. Um, work deemed essential. It makes me feel kind of good inside that I'm actually essential for once. Um, said it. So I guess if you're not essential, you would be decential. Whatever. Anyways, um, so I go to work, come home, don't go anywhere. We've been doing that. You know, weekends are very boring. I, I do get out, um, go up to my mom's house. Um, she's 91. I take care of her a little bit, you know, bring her some food and stuff. Uh, do a little shopping for her so she don't get out. And Anyways, so I stopped by the yard and thought I'd, well, film a little episode here. Um, getting a little stir crazy, so thought I'd uh, catch up on some Bob the Sign Man episodes. So I stopped by my yard on a Saturday and shot a little video here, and I thought I'd give you the whole story. So you don't want to miss this exciting episode coming your way right now. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today, uh, what happens when your sign leaves the shop when it's done? It, it's ready to go out in the field and be mounted. But are you ready? So this is a little section of a Telspar post that we use. It's a square post. We drive an anchor in the ground and then it fits inside the receiver. You know, the post can be 10, 12 feet long, whatever you need. So, and they're punched every inch. Okay, there's a hole. All four sides. So no matter what size, you know, your bolt's gonna fit through to secure your sign. Uh, another reason they do that, it, it'll, it'll weaken the post a little bit. So if it gets hit, it's called breakaway, so it'll fall over and it's not gonna damage your car. So these are these will line up on one inch intervals. You can see how the holes will line up. You just put your hardware through. So it's important to make sure that you have holes in your sign. Let's say you're gonna make a sign like this. It's a W13-135. It's a speed advisory sign that'll go down you know, you see the arrows that, that'll say if there's a sharp turn or a wiggly road coming up? That's the advisory speed. A lot of people interpret this as a speed limit. It's not a speed limit, it's an advisory because it's yellow. If it's a speed limit sign, it will look like this. This is a speed limit. Black and white is regulatory. Good God, people, learn your colors, okay? Regulatory. That should be a whole new video. This is just an advisory. It is not the speed limit, but I would advise you to do that because there's a reason we're telling you to do that. Anyways, let's not get off the subject here. So you order a 24 by 24 diamond. The sign's gonna be mounted like this, right? Because that's how the holes are. You get out in the field. So some, some guys are like, well, you know, I have to order. I don't have any blanks ordered that is ordered that. Well, cut your own holes. That simple. How do you do that? Well. You can get an old sign blank. I just happen to have one in the shop here that happens to have two, you know, for an angle, or one like this for, you know, to mount like this. But we don't always have the luxury of that. But do not worry, because the sign man won't leave you hanging. The sign man's got you covered. So I came up with this little template. Okay. I've got all kinds of different combinations and sizes and everything. So, um,. This is a 24 by 24. So let's just find our 24 by 24. We're gonna set it on the top. There's a 24 by 24 and a 24 by 24. Set it up on the edges so that you're square. Don't worry about the radius. We're not worried about radius. So square up this edge, square up the bottom. Okay, that's a square in there and we're good to go. What I usually like to do is just take a punch. Here's my 24 by 24. Punch it, punch it, okay? Or you can, if you want to, you can make a little felt mark, you know, with a Sharpie, and then, you know, remove your template and drill your holes. This one is unfinished, it's just pre-covered. I'm not gonna demonstrate on this one, but out of my stock, I found this guy, okay? I don't know what this guy's story is. This is a beefy piece of metal, anyways. It was set up for a diamond, okay? And before it leaves the shop, like I said, I'm always prepared to get out in the field. See, I have the, my little punch marks in there. So what I've done 
is I've already set up my um, template here. There's my punch mark there and my punch mark there. So when I get out in the field, I can drill it. I don't like to drill in the shop, and I'll show you why. Drilling in the shop, you get all those little shavings, right? And they get everywhere. They get on the carpet, they get on my table, and before you know it, they're showing up underneath the vinyl and stuff. It's just kind of like that little grease. If you ever go out and you grease a tractor, a plow, or a piece of equipment or something, you know, you shoot the grease on it. Before you know it, you get a little spot of grease on you. Next thing you know, that grease, it's everywhere. It's in the vehicle you're driving. It gets in your personal vehicle on the way home. Then you bring it into the house, and it, it gets it everywhere. I mean, we all know that story, anybody that's used a grease gun. So anyways, what we're going to do is I'm going to, for demonstration purposes only, we're going to drill a sign in the shop here, but we're going to be a little careful. I got my garbage can out. Always, always drill from the top side, okay? Don't drill from the bottom side. And I'm going to show you an example. This is just an example, okay? Let me set up my... I'm going to show you why you want to... You don't want to drill these, nor do you want to punch them until your sign is actually done and complete because you're going to put a little divot there and it's going to... If your image, if your EC film or whatever is going to fall over that hole, it's, it's not going to just not gonna work don't do it you just don't know what's gonna happen so let's do a little drill here always drill from the top of your sign to the bottom you think oh my god we're gonna ruin the sign no we're just punching a hole in it you're gonna get a nice clean hole going through because the drills gonna cut out the EC film okay watch how clean this hole looks I'm gonna just go a little slow first to, you know make sure I don't wrap myself up into my work here Oh, and one other tip from the sign man. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, like I was saying, I stopped, um, kind of got caught up in the movie a little bit here. I picked up the drill and I was going to start drilling. And what's going to happen? All these little metal shavings are going to go everywhere, right? Right, everywhere. They're going to go around the table, up, everywhere. Good God, don't forget your safety glasses when you're drilling. You know, you might think, oh, they look stupid or whatever, but hey, you know what? You only got one set of eyes. So we're going to drill this out. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe this metal off. That stuff gets everywhere. That's why I do not drill inside the shop. Sometimes we'll take these outside, got a little table out there. We're going to set up and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll drill them out there. We're not going to do them here. Take my glasses off for a second. These safety glasses fit over my glasses. Sometimes I wear contact lenses, sometimes I don't. But anyways, let me show you this hole here that we cut. Look how clean that is. No problem, the bolt's going to go through. You know, there's a little burr on the, on the inside here. Um, you can take your little knife if you want to remove that burr. Um, so that's why you want to drill on the finished side of your sign. Only drill when your sign is completely finished. Don't try to drill it ahead of time. Good God. What do you think? Okay, now let's drill the other side. Look at that. A little metal shaving in my finger already. Don't forget your safety glasses. So now we're going to drill through this side, and I'll show you what's going to happen. done to this rag is going in the garbage. Don't want that thing around anywhere. Remove my safety glasses. Okay. So I showed you how clean that hole was when we did the finished side. Now look what happens when you go from the unfinished side. Make sure we get a good angle there. This one isn't so bad, but sometimes it just really rips a snot out of them, I guess you could say for choice word there. And you can take your knife and clean it up, but it's, it's, it's damaged the vinyl, it's, it's ripped it, it's split it. It's just not a clean, clean cut through. You can go around and, and you know, trim it with your knife. 
you can see how it's it's just monkeyed up that hole a little bit. This one's nice and clean. So always remember to drill your holes from the top when you're finished and when you're drilling, good God, put on some safety glasses. Only one set of eyes are issued per person. But this particular sign only has two holes in it. It's on the it's on the uh, on the long side we call it because your wind brace will be see these are spaced at 36 inches. So this is gonna be the bottom of my sign. Sometimes what I'll do is at the very bottom here, I'll put a little X. So I know that's the bottom of my sign. So you get out in the field and you go, oh my goodness, I don't have my wind brace that you put on. Uh, and talk about a wind brace, I'll show you what a wind brace is. So they call them wind braces, back braces, or whatever. So what it is, on the back of your sign, you're gonna have your post running like this. You know, here's your post. And then you'll have some holes on the side here. We'll kind of stabilize this sign. Because it's a big sign and it's flopping around and, and stuff like that. You know, the wind hits these things and it just wreaks havoc on the bolts and stuff. So you have this wind brace that you'll put across there. They call it wind brace, back brace, whatever you want to call it. So that's what we're referring to. So this sign, like, only has two holes. So you get out in the field and you go, oh my goodness, I don't have the holes here to line up. How am I going to get this thing to, to line up out in the field? You can use your old sign, but what if you're converting from a 30-inch sign to a 36-inch sign? So in comes the sign man's template. So what we'll do is we'll just set the blank on the top here. Now the, the top and the bottom holes are already in here. You can feel them underneath. So all I have to do is when the sign blank is finished, I just come in here, make my marks. I'm just gonna, for purposes here, I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, felt marks in here so we can see it on the video. And here's the top of the sign here. It says top, and this is the bottom here, okay? Now there's, there's my, let's see if we can see this here. There's my holes for my wind brace. The, now the wind brace, these are 36 inches apart. This runs down the center. So this will be the center of my post right here. And then this wind brace is gonna go on the back of the sign, okay? It goes on the back, but as you can see, the holes will line up perfect into my 32 and right through the center, okay? But don't punch these until you're ready to go out until your sign is completely finished. Otherwise, like I said, you'll have those little divots in there and it just, it's its not gonna, do not try that. Do not do that. Don't let me catch you doing that. Okay, so there's my little template that I've made. And I've got all kinds of combinations on here that I've used over the, the years. Um, down here, I have my street signs, my 36 by nines, my 48s, 42s. Um, 18 by 24s from a bike lane signs, 24 by 24s. I have 30 by 30s that you can set up for diamond. I have 48 by 30 signs. I have the 18 by 24 or 18 by 36 set up down on this side. You know, it's that arrow, uh, or they, some guys call it the Batman W1 7, you know, where it's a double arrow. And a lot of people do graffiti on that, turn it into Batman. Anyways, so here's the 18 by 36, and then uh, the holes that line up. The bottom then or the wind brace back brace whatever you want to call it uh, you know 18 by 30 I have 48 by 30s 30 diamonds 36 is 24 by 30s I mean I have all kinds of various combinations and then on the back side I even have for larger signs I have 45 by 36s 48 by 30s 45 by 36 my four foot by three foot yeah, I have all kinds of templates set up on the back as well so this is a good little deal. You can just start creating your own. Um, make sure you label all the holes and that they match up so you can find your 18 by 18. And Oh, here's an 18 by 18, 18 by 18. So you know you got your holes are going to line up. Sometimes in a pinch, you can't get out in the field and you go, oh, I was going to put this sign up. But my new one doesn't have holes in it so you can take your old one and kind of line it up but sometimes what happened back in the old days when we were doing wooden posts the guys would just measure this 
They go, here's my middle. And then they come down so far and they go, here we go. Okay. That was back in the, uh, I'm doing my, anyways, that was back in the, I call it the old days before we came out with the Telspar post and there, oh, here it is. So back in the old days, the wooden post, it didn't matter because it didn't have holes. Then along came the new invention, the Telspar post. So then some of the old posts wouldn't match up because here'd be your top hole. And then the one which the hole always is going to line up in between or just off center a little bit. It's never going to work out right. So anyways, like I said, the most important thing, take your time. Do it right the first time. And make sure that when you're, you um, drill your holes, do it away from your shop. Do it outside. But make sure you have a plan ready so when you get out in the field, you can drill these. I almost prefer to drill them out in the field. I just like to keep that on. Because sometimes away. you never know what's going to happen out in the field. Like if I have these already drilled out and... Uh, I might have to only go up this high with the sign and put the brace. So this part of the sign, or or maybe this much of the sign, isn't going to have a um, support in the back of it. So I always make sure that I drill my holes, or I should say, cut them out. You know, I've even had people say, "Well, you know, then, then you can see." I, I've seen it too. It drives me that shit crazy. Is the sun will shine through and you can see the little, little tiny hole if you drive by. Most people aren't going to notice stuff like that, but I notice stuff like that. It's just, I don't know, it's just me being weird. So what I've done is I've taken a little square piece of EC film and I've covered these up. So when you're driving by, the sun doesn't shine through and I don't see the hole. And then I don't think about it all day and dwell on it. Like I said, just me being weird. Anyways, so there's some pretty um, helpful tips I think on um, what to do if you have a sign blank that the holes aren't going to line up. So, you know, don't, don't panic and think I have to make this sign, but I only have this blank with these holes. Make yourself a template, figure it out. You know, that's a 36 by 36 inch template that I use, works perfect. Or, you know, use your old sign blank if you have any in stock and, you know, match it up and just, you know, match the holes. But make sure that they're on equal inch intervals, depending on what post you're using. If you're using wood posts, it's not as critical as, as you use these telespar posts. It's pretty critical. But, um, so there's my kind of little helpful hint. Hope this kind of helps people out. Realize that you don't have to always have a special order of aluminum and say, I can't make that sign because the holes aren't going to line up. Well, alrighty. There you have it. The whole story. Well, I hope you've uh, found this a little interesting. Uh, maybe you get a little tip or so from the uh, sign man's little template that I made. Uh, I just took a 36 inch blank and, you know, started punching some holes in it. Uh, whenever I needed something to line up, I, you know, make sure you kind of label your obviously you're going to have to label the holes there. Otherwise it's going to drive you nuts anyways. Um, so, so there you have it. Um, thought I'd get a little, uh, caught up on some videos here since I really have nothing to do. A lot of time on my hands. Um, anyways, um, everybody just, you know, be safe, think smart, you know, take care of yourself, take care of somebody else and, uh, don't hoard the toilet paper. Okay. There's plenty. Believe me. All right. As always, thanks for watching.